Today I'm going to take you through how I design in front of customers on my first survey visit. So this is all at the no obligation stage of, of quoting for fitted furniture. And right from when I started out, I, I saw value in sitting with the customer and designing there and then so that they know exactly what they're getting and I know exactly what I'm quoting on and I can give a fixed price quote and they've had an opportunity to give immediate feedback on the design. It's quite an efficient use of my time and their time, although it does, it does require some time investment uh, on this one visit. Um, so for example, for this particular project, I was at the house for three hours all in. That included a fairly leisurely discussion with the customer about what it is that they wanted to do with the room. And then I, I left the customer with a form that we, we give as standards, which gives a bit of a heads up on our terms and conditions, payment terms, that sort of stuff, if they were to proceed. And while the customer's looking at that and filling that out, I do a hand drawing of the space. Um, I use something called a, a pyramid liner. I recommend looking that up if you're in this line of work. Uh, it's a, a, a backer sheet with fine grooves in it, which when you put a thin sheet of paper on the front, you can draw at right angles. So I can draw fairly accurate measured survey by hand, put all my dimensions on using the tape measure. Um, I used to use the laser measure, but I've lost it. Uh, so that's that. Um, so uh, I've got distracted now. Uh, that's the process, so I will I will then have the customer leave me measuring and then at the kitchen table I'll be sitting drawing what you're seeing now, which is laying out the space as it is, as existing. So backtracking a bit with what you've already seen, I laid out the walls using a tool that comes with the extension for SketchUp, because this is SketchUp software I'm using, an extension called Cabinet Sense which does a lot of clever things, one of which is the, the wall tool, which allows me to draw walls like a line and preset the height and the thickness and that sort of thing. Um, they also have functionality where I can select walls and choose a scene with only those walls and anything that's on those walls visible. So I did that earlier on with a scene that you'll see at the top called, uh, oh no, I haven't done it yet, there's a scene called uh, Main View and I did earlier on with one called Bird's Eye. Uh, so they, they then become, there we go, look, there's Bird's Eye. So I just clicked on that, went back to that viewpoint just to get the overview. Drew my walls, uh, dropped in some electrical sockets from a library that I and Graham created. We drew a range of realistically sized sockets so we can just drop them in and you know what's there. Uh, same with radiators, similar with uh, skirting profiles and that sort of thing. And now I'm on to dropping in a bit, of a bit of furniture. This is a settee that they've chosen from made.com so they could give me the dimensions. And I looked for something near enough similar on the 3D warehouse. I had to flip it because the, the, the L shape was the other way round. And then I just push pulled it to the, the correct sizes and added some feet so it looks a little bit more like the sofa that they had in, in mind. Uh, what I'm doing here is creating a grid layout. I often start this way. I give myself an offset for the scribes and then a regular pattern of spacings that I think will be suitable to the units that I plan to then fill the space with. The other thing I should say is you, you might, might have seen me just modeling a TV there. That was a dynamic component that I created um, where you can type in the sizes, the width and height of the TV and the height of, of the stand and it enables me just to very quickly model a TV of the same proportions as the customer's TV, which helps to give scale and helps you then to check sight lines and things like that um, with the actual shape of TV. So now I'm on to modeling the cabinets. And this is perhaps the most interesting thing for those of you that use SketchUp. This is done using components generated using the cabinet sense extension. Um, so these have been built originally by Paul at Cabinet Sense. We have created our own variants. Uh, what you're seeing now is just a little basket I'm modeling from scratch, a toy basket the customer already had, and I'm checking how that fits inside the cabinet. So Cabinet Sense is a, a set of, well, it's, it's lots of things, but it has a set of dynamic components, which the great thing about them is all of the parts that make up the cabinet are cut list ready. So Really, the whole, the whole idea of what I'm doing here 
is to create a drawing as a design in front of the customer that is build ready. So if the customer says, yeah, I love that, that's exactly what I want, which is always the aim, and they are there with me to correct me as I'm drawing it, then I can click a few buttons and this will generate a labeled parts list and a board cutting list. So I'm not having to go in and read off dimensions or do what I used to do, which was to explode the things I've drawn in SketchUp and take out all the parts and spin them to flat and lay them out manually, well, still dig digitally, but sort of manually in 3D space to try and fit a board. This is excellent, an excellent system that can, can cut all that out. And we spent a long time, years really, getting to this point. Um, we started off making SketchUp dynamic components ourselves and thinking there's got to be a better way and then discovering this extension where a lot of it was already done. And then we've we've learned here and doctored things. So we've added, I think I'm about to drop in a, see there's a side panel that Graham's programmed up so it snaps and rotates. It recognizes the side of the cabinet there and you just have to shorten it. Um, you can change handles, that sort of thing. Now I will take the time now to get these details right, whereas in the past I would have just block modeled the whole thing and maybe given an indication of a shaker door, but it wouldn't have been a complete unit, it just would have been a block. Now with this system it's just as quick, maybe quicker, to build something with all the parts exactly as they should be. The only parts that we haven't got set up as dynamic components that are ready for cut list are the countertops and that's something we could we could set up. Um, it's not a big deal just to read off the sizes of them. So I, I showed you making the lower cabinets. I think you saw me doctoring what was essentially a, a pre-drawn wardrobe. It was just the easiest one that I found that needed a few things removing and changing to become a, a short shaker cabinet. I've now taken uh, I think what was a top box really, so it didn't already have a plinth uh, height setting in it, and I've told it to hide the base, I've deleted the doors, and I've started to scale it to where it needs to be. So these dynamic components, one of the points of them is that you can scale it, but the thickness of the parts doesn't scale, it pops back to a fixed width that you can set so you'll have seen me bringing up the dialog box for the components. That's the, the component options box, um, which then which has a lot of programmed uh, places where you can enter your overall height, width, and various other things depending on the unit. So now we've got the shelf, which has some, some dynamic functionality. Um, once you position it, it remembers that position. You can also tell it a position with measurements, depends how you want to work with it. I've dropped in there a, a cornice that was using the profile builder extension, which you might have seen me using earlier for the skirting. Now what I'm putting in for the customer's benefit is some pre-drawn components from the library. I've created all these over the years. They're accurately scaled books, files, as you can see, that sort of thing. And at this stage in the build, I'm, I'm involving the customer, so I've, I've come up with the main layout and I've gone back to the image you saw there from Neville Johnson that they first sent to me when they said, we want something like this. And I've said to the customer, so I've just drawn it simply now, did you want me to add those classical pillars and that sort of thing? And she, she said, well, actually, no, we don't particularly want that. So that's a bonus. I mean, I was ready to add it in, um, but they... She seemed to really like this simple layout. What she did want was the asymmetrical dividers breaking up the shelves. That's one of the things that drew them to that, that first image, as well as the color, which I'm going to add later on. So now I'm dropping in dividers. These are, again, dynamic components that will recognize their place within the unit and will snap to the gap between shelves, or depending how you place them, you can get them to cut the shelves. What I'm doing here is, having said to the customer, let's look at things you want to put on the shelves, she's brought out a lovely ceramic sculptural vase, which I took rough measurements of and then modeled the approximate shape of and colored the approximate color. 
I do my best with colours. I'm a little bit colour blind, so I, I never pretend to be the expert on colour. Uh, but there you go. There's the vase. It's it's enough like the one she has that she can tell what that is. And we've discussed where it might go and having a spotlight above it. Now, what you've just seen is me adding colour to the units. She did want to have that blue that she saw in the, in the Neville Johnson project. The way that I've done that in SketchUp is using the eyedropper tool. I've sampled the material that was already applied to most of the units. Uh, although they were white, it was a material, um, just a white colour. And then I've changed that white colour to blue. So this is a great way of working with materials in SketchUp. You can change the applied colour instead of refilling each uh, modelled part. So that's how I've changed that. I could then change that to different shades in the same way. What I'm doing now is creating different views, which I'm saving as scenes, which you see along the top, which I'm then exporting as JPEGs. And although I've colored the model, I've created some scenes where the color isn't shown. It's just a hidden line style because I want to do measured elevations and that sort of thing. Using the Cabinet Sense extension, we can manage scenes in such a way that you can add dimensions which are automatically private to the scene, which means that when you go to a different scene, a different view, those dimensions aren't there cluttering it up. But you go back to, for example, this elevation, and there you've got your dimensions. So it's all within the model managed on different layers. And this, it, this saves me exporting uh, viewports to layout, which is the architectural drawing application that comes as part of the package with SketchUp Pro. It's a great piece of software, but it's simply quicker for me to do things within SketchUp in this way. And it's good enough. It allows me to show the dimensions, um, notes like I'm doing here, where a spotlight might go. Quick and easy, exported as a JPEG, attached to an email. Customers are very happy with this. And this is this is all part of the dream. The dream of seeing a customer and then by the time I walk away, it's all detailed and ready to make should they wish to proceed. Uh, if, if anybody out there listening to this is in the process of going from being a, a one-man band designer maker to trying to build a business with other staff, you'll understand that the communication is a big stumbling block. You know how things should be made, and when you did it all, all by yourself, you just went and made it. Bring someone else in, however good they are, they either don't know the right way or, or your way, or they've got their own ways, and it's it, it can take much more time to build things as a team at first compared to just doing it yourself. So having a tool where a lot of the details of construction are are designed into the 3D model um, helps you get over a lot of those barriers because then it's it's out of your head and it's detailed already. Um, so I'm coming to the end of this this film. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you found this content interesting, do subscribe. I'm doing my best to get a, a video out about every week. I must say I'm struggling a little bit. I've had to do this voiceover in lots of bits because my software keeps uh, chopping it off part way through. Um, but I love sharing this information. Um, I love getting feedback. So do uh, ask me any questions that this may have prompted and your questions may lead me to make another video uh, to, to meet that, that area of interest. Uh, so again, thank you for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll speak to you next time.